Hey folks, welcome to the podcast. So we're doing a special series of podcasts which I'm recording over Google Hangouts. So we're doing audio and video because for some unknown reason, people don't wanna come see me face to face right now. But there's always opportunity and the cool thing is I'm able to now podcast with people from all over the world. So we're gonna get an amazing eclectic mix of people from from different industries, different perspectives to share their story and tell us you know, their thoughts and feelings on what's going on right now and all of that cool stuff hope you enjoy it please subscribe in all the usual places and enjoy and we are live thank you everyone for joining us thanks also for all the comments and feedback from the previous episodes really really useful thank you so much today it's really great to be joined by sandra perio who is the strategy director from chael uk Um, and she's into brands consumer retail and really really excited to hear all about online and offline retail and technology and all of that cool stuff. So Sandra, welcome to the podcast. Hi, hello everyone. Thank you for having me. Pleasure, pleasure. We spoke, we were just saying off air, uh, we spoke just during, I think it was during the first lockdown and you said, yeah, it's all great. I love working at home. Uh, Is that still the case? (laughs) No, it's not. (laughs) Well, I have, I have to say that at the beginning, I did like, uh, because of uh, my the nature of my work as well, strategist, obviously, everything is burning. Um, I needed space and time to think what was happening. So I think the lockdown was quite actually a nice space to reflect yeah. on what was happening. Um, but the second lockdown, no, is, is difficult this time, I have to say. I think that um, now we have... We have a clear idea of what we need to do, and uh, and and yeah, this lockdown is preventing us from doing it. So it's become frustrating to be at home. Yeah. But but I have nice condition of work, so I don't complain. But um, yeah, that's fine. I want to go back to work. You want, you want to go back to the office? Do you see then? Yeah. Do you want? Obviously, you want the office as part of your life going forward, right? Do you see yourself like you want to go back five days a week, or do you want to do like a combination? Um, I don't, th- I don't see, um, I don't see coming as coming back to work five days a week. I think that, uh, um, I think that uh, in everything in life, and I think, and we will talk about offline and online retail in the in the, in the next hour. But uh, I think that uh, on and off the office is also um, uh, there are there are pros and cons in in both. Uh, and I think in the very near future, we will try to find the balance in between um this uh, the, this too so i believe that uh, for um, i believe that i will go back to work two days a week um to, back to the office two days a week from january um but let's see how 2021 unfolds but um I, I believe it will be probably if not 50 50 50 it will be it will be something yeah. like that i can i think i can see myself five days a week back in the office yeah um, <laughs> In fact, to be honest, I'm in the office right now. We have um, over lockdown. We um, we got a, a great new. Uh, uh, we we use an apartment actually, a really nice like, apartment in Allgate as our office, and it feels like a really nice home from home. Um, a friend of mine's an interior designer, and she um, shout out to Lucy. She came in and she designed our workspaces and made us some nice furniture and. And so we've really like just evolved, if you like. And and I like I don't I like to get out of the house and I like to my commute is really cool because it's a bit of exercise, you get to listen to a podcast or do some thinking and stuff. And then you come in and you do your thing and then you go home. And then when I get home, it feels like home, you know. Because I I speak to so many people and, and their home and their work just blend. You know, they get up and they're on the work then they're working earlier and they're working later plus they get their laptop out in front of netflix plus they're working at weekends <laughs> you know it just it's relentless you know it's just I, I like some routine and just a bit of separation i think so and and leading yeah. us on leading us on to like commerce and you know i'm in the city and, and the sad thing with the second lockdown is you know that's all the shops are shut now you know and obviously christmas I mean, if you haven't bought shares in Amazon, probably now's the time to do it, right? Um, yeah. You know, so I just think it's fascinating. And let's talk about like how, put it on the thing, how tech's changing the way we shop. Because I know 
um, Instagram have just started doing e-commerce. Facebook have been doing it for a while. How have you seen that all develop? Well, it's, well, it's interesting that you mentioned Amazon and, and Christmas because this is a yeah we are in a in a moment where where everything is uh, crystallizing and uh, the the importance and the 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 beauty of social commerce is uh, is uh, is uh, is getting more concrete. Um, yeah. So yeah, Instagram has a uh, uh, ramping up its uh, shopping shopping capability since uh, a few years now. I mean, it's been around since uh, quite a while, but uh, now you can they they develop um, uh, Instagram checkout, so you can basically uh, do all the purchase experience in the in the in the app so this is a this is a revolution for what oh, so you can um, pay you can actually pay also in the app yes so it's really really simple you don't have to open a different um, platform in order to complete your your purchase so it's becoming really really simple the same for facebook that uh, they introduce a, a facebook uh, shop or yeah shopping so which is which is a platform that at the end this is a platform that will will um aggregate actually all the the, the conversion from um facebook but instagram whatsapp so, yeah, oh, so all they'll, these, they'll make it yeah. to one one shopping platform yes so everything is uh, um is, is becoming um, more and more simpler but uh, why it's interesting is a uh, 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 Instagram is becoming uh, very critical during uh, 2020 uh, and during the lockdown to promote small and independent business. So um, it's, it's very difficult, as we know, you said that all, uh, a lot of shops uh, have been unfortunately forced to close. But I also saw so on a positive note, a lot of sh small and independent shop and, and restaurants pivoting their, their model very, very quickly. And they yeah. would not have not been able to do that uh, without the help of tech, without the help of social uh, platform for social commerce. So um, Instagram, they have obviously they have this big campaign um, about, uh, it was a sticker, a promoter, uh, small business stickers, and they have um, obviously helped oh, yeah, those. Uh, yeah, so you could, you could, you could obviously uh, let, uh, your network knows what uh, what is your favorite spot, but also provide some information such as I feel safe there. Um, the the owner is really nice, so uh, I really want to support him. So you could buy a gift card, you could you could buy takeaway. So um, so Instagram in that sense play a great role at uh, keeping a local business alive for a certain time obviously it doesn't fix everything but uh, it helped to um, it, it had helped some some business so um what is very interesting uh, is uh, social commerce they are uh, by providing tools of uh, e-commerce tools which are um the platform and 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 the process in order to uh, provide a very smooth and seamless uh, customer experience to shopper that's one but also by providing small businesses with data, understanding of their customer. Uh, this is also helping this small business to, to refine their, their offer, to, to pivot their model, because there is a need for, for everyone. There is a need of extreme agility right now in commerce. Um, and yes, big brand like Amazon, they have the capacity to be very agile, although they have also, it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a monster to move. Yes. So uh, yeah, there yeah. are limits. Yeah, but uh, well, small businesses they can be very very agile if they have the right tools and social yeah. commerce social platform are definitely delivering that. Oh, I think it's amazing because also um, obviously there's 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 none paid and paid right. So like if you just think about I don't know you have um, a clothes brand or something and you're taking pictures. Um, which I guess are offline, which we can speak about, and you're posting it, it's 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 free to distribute your content. Right? You can, it's free to distribute to millions and millions of people. You know, maybe if you get the hashtags right, it goes out to a few more. Um, the stories are great as well. So, so you've got those, um, uh, the gifts and stuff, like I'm a small business and I'm supporting the NHS and yeah. all of those things. So, so yeah, I think now it's to your point, um, if you're a small business and you've had to pivot to maybe, a, I don't know, you're a coffee company and you've had to pivot to a subscription model 
and you're taking beautiful pictures of your coffee beans or your equipment. I think now it's almost, I'd say easier, but you can get out to more people than you would have done if you were just an offline coffee shop with no, with no Instagram, no Facebook, no Twitter, no TikTok. Yeah. And all that. It's, it's possible. Obviously, there are a lot of brands and a lot of people on Instagram. And um, I think that uh, we get in touch uh, following a, an article that I wrote uh, a few months ago yeah. um, regarding Instagram. And I was mentioning the fact that uh, obviously this is a great tool. This is a great platform and, and uh, it, it provides really what, what small business and uh, brands needs to uh, reach their customer. But obviously, it's crowded out there and it's... Yeah. So um, I don't know how much you can achieve uh, with, uh, with free access to this tool. You, you still need to, um, you need to be smart with the hashtag strategy, obviously, but you need to be, uh, I think a business still needs to invest a little bit in a promoted posts uh, in order okay. to, uh, to reach uh, some, some customer. But, but in theory, and if you uh, give that tool um, 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 attention and, and if you invest yeah. in that tool, uh, you can you can obviously win big because what you what I find fascinating with Instagram is that it's a very different type of commerce. It's a, it's a social commerce. So yeah. the lead that uh, you are creating are stronger because social is more emotional and and uh, th yeah. there are so many things. So in shopper marketing, it's called cognitive bias. So there are so many things that are triggered when you are on Instagram visually i mean instantly we we connect the context yeah. of use instantly we can relate and also peer validation which is probably yes. what is the the key to the checkout so um so yeah it's fascinating and and you mentioned as well because i work for samsung and offline retail experience mainly and i'm a fear defender of offline retail <laughs> Um, and I do love Instagram because I think Instagram bridges the gap between the online and offline. Because how mostly, does it feel? Because if you look at what the brands are posting, there are many posting real life experience. They are posting photos of their shop. We we talk a lot about uh, Glossier, who was a, a online a pure player that became so that that grows so fast on Instagram. But then they open a store, they open a few stores actually across the world, and they were keeping posting photos of the shop, how welcoming it was, how the people were, how the product looks. So you have you have their sales assistant showing how the product is really, and, and yeah. it, it was providing the sense of reality. So Instagram, even if it's online, provide that offline reality feel. Yeah, so all, obviously all the pictures are real life pictures. Right. So you're yeah. so to your point, you're I don't know, maybe you're, you're a clothes brand and I get tempted by clothes all the time on Instagram because the little adverts come up in my feed and it is like click here for the shops. So I click. But all the pictures you're right are like a model or a real life scenario wearing the clothes. So it's yeah, it's all the pictures are offline pictures online. Yeah. Yeah. And. And we saw we saw a lot of uh, initiative during lockdown of assisted shopping. So someone going to the store, obviously on his own because of um, security measure, but then sh showing people how oh, that in, in uh, Instagram live. So you have live reaction, and, ah, yeah. and that was that was uh, this is something that I was discussing um, back in last year actually. But I I, I do believe that. Uh, um, uh, in social platform, in, uh, because TikTok is uh, is actually currently um, launching a business offer. Uh, okay. They just launched TikTok for business in um, in the US, and what they launch. It? So it's TikTok for business. So they they it's basically my understanding is it's quite similar to Instagram. So some um small so some businesses will be able to open a, a professional account on tiktok and oh, okay. they will be and they will be able to have provide so it's a part in partnership with shopify so they will have access to uh, some um shopping capability um, oh, so you can so, do like a cool tiktok dance and then maybe like you see what the clothes brand is and then you can exactly. like, click through or something 
cool. exactly. And what is interesting is they are launching with a with a big campaign to support um, uh, black uh, small bi and in small business. So uh, they have uh, this massive challenge um, called the uh, hashtag uh, Shop Black, and it's a challenge okay. and it it give it, it provide exposure to these uh, small uh, businesses and and uh, help uh, and help people to to buy. So. Um, so yeah, all of that happened no, no. in the store. All of that are real life, um, real life use of products in context and and promoted by a small business owner, which became the most influential people <laughs> recently. The TikTokers are amazing. You go on on there, and I mean, it's just the, the views and of the videos is is outstanding. I think also the age range has is increased over lockdown as well. Like it yeah. was quite a young platform. I, I probably still is, but I, I think I've heard, I heard that the age range has, has widened a lot uh, over lockdown as people are like, what should I do today? Oh, let's do a TikTok dance and stick it on. Um, but no, just kind of, I guess, circling back to the e-commerce and I think for small businesses, it's, it, it is great because without, without these platforms, what could you have done right now? I mean, how would you have got your product out? How would you have sold anything? And, and I love the I love the blend. I hadn't the, since before I spoke to you a, a few weeks ago. I hadn't thought really about the fact that in such great detail that all of the pictures are offline stuff. You know, like if you've got a beautiful shop on Savile Row doing, you know, high end tailoring, all of those beautiful pictures go online, and then maybe people the the end sale might be online, but the connection between the two is really. Is really important so so i know you love offline retail so um so do you think then more people now if we look if we look a little bit forward they're going to be making the purchases online but offline is important to those to those purchases um i wish i had a crystal ball to be very precise on that one but i don't um, but i think that uh, what i can see for the, the future of offline retail is a is a, a differentiation of type of store so you will have a multiplicity of small store that will extend online uh, shopping experience so you will have click and collect you will have a pick up you will have drop you know all of this um, capability. So we will see that in the street. We will see that small shops where you can just have a transaction, quick transaction. I just think, yeah. And I, but alongside that, you will have also house of brands. You will have uh, uh, with a with a bit with a theater with a theater with with a, a really the 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 brand is, is in its ideal version of itself, where you can play with product. Uh, you can obviously um, go on a discovery journey. So I think that uh, shopping is, uh, at, at the moment, the industry is, re and rightly so for many reasons, but focus on convenience and transaction. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Because this is what technology allows us to do, which is to make this journey so easy that uh, obviously um, you do it quick and you don't think about it too much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but there is also, as I say, social shopping is social activity and it's entertainment for many, many, many uh, shoppers. So um, on a Saturday, uh, this is something. Oh, you you call your, your your friends and you you meet in the store and you go on a discovery journey. Yeah. Now you, you know when you go to Nike Town, for example, you know 100% that you will see something incredible, visually incredible at least, and you don't even need to buy anything. You just go for wow, sure. what they the world they create you know oh yeah no I, I actually love that i used to work in fashion actually and um anyway that's my excuse for saying that about to say that i really love going shopping um <laughs> i uh, i used to love on the weekend going to liberties and then going yeah. over to selfridges just having a little walk around check it out see what's going on try a few clothes i might be might be convinced to buy something but um but you're right like I always used to like go into town for the day and you'd check out a few shops you'd grab a drink have a have a pint down the pub or something you know like it's a whole it's a really like nice nice day out right on the weekend like so many people obviously used to do that um yeah. so I think yeah. that that will uh, still happen because uh, yeah, so, so yeah. obviously we will have uh, I will not say that um 
there will not be more store closure. There will be because the, the, the entire brand, they need to rethink their retail architecture. Because also it's, then, yeah, yeah. Because for some it's expensive, right? Like if you, you know, it's not, it's not cheap to have, I mean, the prices have probably gone down now, but you know, if you're a smaller brand, it's expensive to have a shop in a, in a, you know, on, on Oxford Street or Regent Street or something like that. And, you know, if you're making the sales online and you're investing the money in paid advertising on Instagram, which really works, then may, maybe you won't, you know, maybe to your point, it's going to be the big brands that are going to have like really, really cool, like, you know, come to the, come to the Apple store. Um, maybe they don't ever make any sales there. Maybe actually, I think even an app, you go in and then they're like, okay, pay on your phone. You know, like, I think that's what I'm sure they, I think that's what happens, right? I think that's what happens. I bought one of the stylists from there recently and the guy was like, I'll oh, pay on your pay on your phone or something. So, so I think it's, it is going to be a really interesting like intersection between like technology, offline, online. Like it'll be interesting to see. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think that the, stores will become a, a statement. I mean, it's a statement because everyone knows that it's expensive, uh, yeah. it's not necessarily a center of profit. If you, if you consider old KPIs, I think yes. that uh, yeah. the, the difficulty everyone had at the moment is, uh, uh, you know, online, offline, it's different line, different silo. And so, and it's difficult to understand what exactly has triggered the, which channel really trigger the purchase. So I think there is a need for more fluidity internally from brands, agency, and all of that in order to yeah, consider yeah. a big the journey as a whole. Definitely. Um. So or, or change the KPIs because the 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 store the the value of the store the KPIs has to have to change. Yeah. Um. But it will become a statement. So um. Only big brands uh, will afford probably to have um, big stores that, you know, uh, big temple, almost brand temple. Um, but That's also like what is interesting, what will unfold as well is that you will have a lot of retail space empty. Uh, and obviously uh, you can convert that into home or flat, but uh, you can also convert that into pop-up space for retail, for online player. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. I think the way forward for a brand that cannot afford a permanent uh, store would be um, uh, would be residence collaboration with uh, established big brand. Um, so maybe department store can find their way here um, again and um, and pop and pop up store. So um, where depending on the demand, so it could be completely data driven. We like to think that, but. Um, based on demand, based on season, based on events, cultural events, you can switch the store and, and allow an online um, brand to have a physical presence. Because I think to do commerce and to grow, you need that physical presence, you need that physical experience. 100%, yeah. And also for other brands, like and if, if again, if you go to like high-end tailoring or, um, yeah, uh, couture stuff like that. Like you want the experience. I want to go into my tailor. I want him or her to measure me up. I want to feel the fabric. Uh, you know, like that whole experience of getting a suit made, or or even if it's buying like some something tech related. I mean, like going to an Apple store is pretty cool. It's just good to hang out a little bit and see what's going on and feel it. And and I and also the great thing about cities like London, Paris, you know, all of these places. It's so buzzy, you know, when people are shopping and like, you know, they're fun, they're having a chat with their friends, they're grabbing a coffee, you know, it beats the whole experience. You go for it, you go for a little shop, you get tired, you go to your coffee shop, you have a drink, you have something to eat, you go for the next thing. Um, I think the pop-up idea is great. I've also heard um, some of the prestigious um, um, streets in London, like Savile Row and some of the others, um, I think they're giving away space like you know like the rates have come right right down you know because they want they want people in there and so to your point it could be a pop-up um and there's a lot of a lot of businesses go under unfortunately they'll there'll be more space available and so if you're a if maybe you started off online you'll end i think it'd be a real real mix and 
I mean, yeah. I really hope these places get back up and running. I went to Oxford Street the other day and there's like no one, you know, yeah. no one at all. I think I think the 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 shopping has changed fundamentally, and and I and everyone was saying that he has a the the, the twenty twenty has just accelerated the change. The change was coming anyway, so uh, it just really accelerate um, all of these uh, transition for retail. Um, so we will find. Uh, I have no doubt that there will be a model that will be found. Uh, will be fine. Sorry. Um, where uh, offline uh, space have their role to play and it's clear and where online has a role to play and it's clear because online shopping is also fantastic i mean it has been life-saving for during lockdown yeah, yeah. Yeah. i find it amazing that uh, my mother-in-law who uh, never never shop online now she's she's set up she's uh, she's enjoying it she's independent again yeah. because for for a large chunk of population they, they felt not they, they, they were not obviously nobody was really free during lockdown but uh, when you don't um, when you are not used to use a technology to, um, to to buy what you need on a daily basis you feel really really frustrated isolated and yeah and a lot of, deprived from yeah, yeah definitely and a lot of a lot of people of either that age range or who aren't used to using tech because some people don't trust it. I can't put my credit card details in. How can I? But this pandemic, I mean, you know, the lockdowns, I mean, we weren't really locked down, right? We had Netflix, we had entertainment on demand, Amazon were delivering, Cardo were delivering, everyone, everyone was delivering, right? So you could literally buy anything. I'd love to know what the stats are about um, the increase in sales online versus, I mean, I'd, I'd love to see the data when it comes out. A lot of people have migrated online, but to the limit of their online capacity. So uh, yeah, yeah, off yeah, yeah. offline uh, still has a great role to play as yeah. well. So you're right, because I yeah, it's interesting that much more is offline still, even now. You know, like I used to go to I still do. Like there's a really great local like um, fruit and vegetable shop near me in North London. So over the lockdown, I like you know you walk up, you, you get your stuff. We were doing a cardo as well. So it's always been a, a bit of a mix. Um, yeah, like it's, it's great. Also, it was the only thing you could do during lockdown. It was, <laughs> yeah, it was such a pleasure. Oh, I'm going to the butcher or I'm going to the fishmonger. I was so happy. Uh, so um, it, it was, uh, if you, obviously, if you uh, felt safe to do so, yeah. um, it, it, was, it was quite a, a pleasure to go shopping i love it i actually probably got like to, for the food stuff i was like I'm, i really i want to get great quality food so i like i would queue up you'd queue up for the butcher right if you know they've got great meat or or you want to get great cheese or but you, a lot of it was interesting like i was you would kind of you'd want to spend a little bit more on good quality food if you if you could but then again if you can't get out and you're, yeah. you're self-isolating or you know you're vulnerable or whatever then it's cool like someone was delivering food you know yeah and then i think i think they were also giving priority to people who were vulnerable or self-isolating yeah. and stuff like that so yeah, yeah i mean fortunately for everyone around in in, in this country and others you know it, you, you'd always have stuff available it wasn't you wouldn't you're not going to go without no, but I think that uh, what uh, was interesting uh, for me is uh, it was demonstrating that you need both. You need uh, online and you need also offline because uh, uh, because you need that capacity to go. The convenience store is so important. Uh, so, and I think a lot of people have uh, come to realizing that. So now. Sometimes when you have uh, the choice of uh, because a convenience store is uh, traditionally a little bit more expensive. But then you realize how, how important, uh, what the role in your com in your local community. So then you're like, all right, so I will, I will spend a bit more. Or as uh, you just mentioned, uh, your um, the deli or the the premium shops. Then you come to the re realization that these are important, and you want, don't want them to disappear. So yeah. I think that, uh, and I hope that um, when everything settles, everyone will find his place, his new place. Definitely. With, with role 
reinforced by yeah. um, 2020 experience. Yeah, yeah. I, I was speaking to the, the convenience store, so the one that does the nice fruit and vegetables up in Tufnell Park near where I live. He said he's it's the busiest he's ever been. And then the guy yeah. next door, the butcher, I, 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 I often see the guy and I'm like, hey, how's it all going? And it was like middle of lockdown. He was like, he was like oh my God, like we're so busy. I'm like trying to get more meat from my supplier. Like I don't know what to do. I'm working like every hour. I'm staying open <laughs> later. So there's some real success stories, even over this time, from some, you know, some offline retail, like those types of those types of shops. And yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm convinced that there's a def there's a role to play for both offline and online, and it interchanges. You know, I might see something on Instagram, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to go down to the shop check it out and maybe I'll buy it there or I see it offline and I buy it online so I think you know yeah. it's just it's just with the pandemic everything's on steroids at the moment you know all of these <laughs> trends are just like <laughs> yeah. it's crazy right it's like it's, you just it's very interesting <laughs> yeah yeah I'd love to see like if we, we speak again in, in in like six months or 12 months like what what it ends up looking like like what is the new you know the new rhythm to yeah to it i i hope that um what i can see coming what i uh, what, what we talk about is uh, it, all of that has uh, replaced uh, the human even if we were talking a lot about technology and technology will uh, uh, remove the hassle of a uh, retail they, they will change transform completely operating model in retail and it will, it will change a lot of things, but it will also have the consequence of refocusing on the human. So the, yeah. the, the so you will go to the store to see someone because everything else you can do it online. So when you go to the store, you are really, really with the you will have the desire to meet people, look like people, or think like people, um, or um, uh, have an experience with a product, a guided experience with the product. So. And, and and the social commerce, as we talked uh, earlier, so where people were very keen to look at uh, uh, video stories uh, of, uh, of people shopping or people demonstrating their the, the product that had them go through the the um, go through the lockdown. So all the gym kit, all the the, yeah. the food processor kit, all of that. Yeah. Um, but all of that, as a one commonality, is is the human was at the heart of all of it. Yeah. So um, I hope that. Um, after uh, years of uh, conversation around robot technology and how all of that will destroy uh, <laughs> or will change the retail and destroy the face of retail, I think what we can see, and I, and I will definitely um, work toward that goal, is to show that all this technology has only one benefit, is just to replace human in that uh, experience and and make uh, the experience even better so making the share of the experience at the center of the um of of, of the experience and not um the fulfillment of um little tasks that can be easily um replaced by technology definitely definitely because you know we like um you know this like our senses you know like this like sensory branding and so you know, you go to a shop and you get the smell and the feel and the look and then the shop assistant dressed in, let's say, the clothes of the of the brand with the perfume on. And, you know, like you just get that whole like sensory overload that that, that really like gets you in. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Or oh, like, yeah. it's amazing, right? Smell is so important. Oh, and, yeah. um, I mean, visual and, and smell is so important for me when I enter. A, a store uh, instantly uh, you are you are immersed in the in the in the brand uh, in in the brand story but and also you can then check you are building memories you are checking yes. whether or not the, the brand is telling you the truth online and yeah. when you enter yeah. a, a store the way the store is laid out the way the, the care that has been given to the product presentation to the sales person to the smell to all these li di little detail all of that is a bank of memories then then the brand can activate online because these are deep emotion that uh, you you can play you can you can use in the in the future so yeah. so important I, so important. I've, been, I've been loyal to the brands that i used to buy before lockdown so there's a certain number of brands that i really like to buy for clothes and 
because um, I don't, I just buy into the whole, like, I used to buy them offline. I like the experience, the smell of the shops, the people were nice to me. I felt the product, I've worn it before. So everything I've bought now actually, while well, over lockdown is just stuff I've bought before because I, I just, I'm in, you know, if like I'm sold. <laughs> If I need a t-shirt, I know where I'm going. Like I love, I love the, the t-shirts I buy. Um, I'm, I don't know I, I, if I'm. Uh, I haven't bought a brand that I haven't bought. So I haven't bought a brand over lockdown that I haven't already bought. Uh. You know, I haven't been sold on only only online. Like I'm, I'm sold offline and on. Do you know what I mean? Offline and online. Yeah. I think I, th- I saw some piece of research. I think uh, lockdown did drive discovery. A lot of pro- people have tried new products, um, but uh, most of them out of necessity because they were like shortage or yeah. uh, or um, or they couldn't get delivered or something like that. So I think it has drive discovery, which is quite great for challenger brand or yeah yeah, um, yeah. maybe I'm for me um, no for me I think it's for grocery I definitely try a new brand I, yeah. some of them I will keep some of them not. <laughs> But um, but for a big ticket item or a home uh, item, definitely yeah. rely. I rely like you. I rely on my past experience and and I go where I know the quality is meeting my expectation. Yeah, it's true. I'm just really careful because it's so easy to spend more money online, right? You just press buy. Yeah, <laughs> and but, it gets you. <laughs> But in the meantime, you can, it's so, I, I'm amazed how easy it is to uh, send back um, product oh. now. So easy. You, they can and collect it from your house. You don't pay anything. No. So it, it's. But it's, but for the retailer, that's tough. I mean, you, tough. You, make, yep. you make a sale, but I don't know what you can return 30 days. Some are offering more maybe 60 days so you don't really know how many sales you've made until like let's say 60 days has passed from that item being sent out but then suddenly you've got the cost of sending it out so either you do that yourself or you're using amazon as a as a distribution service which costs um but then also you've got the return cost too because someone has to pay for that so it's interesting what you know once it all comes out in the wash um you know how profitable it is um i yeah i imagine that uh, um i would imagine that more people don't return either for because they're lazy or <laughs> a lot of people they forget as well sometimes yeah 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 um, that's true. Uh, just on a previous point uh, you have a ikea who has a 365 days return policy really so i i would be very interesting interested to uh, know how they how they how they work internally you know there that- that's interesting yeah i mean maybe to your point people don't aren't, can't be bothered i mean but, but uh yeah ch- discussing around i don't have a you know solid piece of research on no, that I one either. But, uh, I didn't either. Uh, products, yeah maybe i don't know it's interesting it'll be interesting to see what the stats are um i think it depends on the value of the product uh, obviously uh, i work for samsung so it's high ticket uh, yeah. It has a high value product, so I think people care and they do return if they're not satisfied. Oh, yeah. um, but uh, in the fashion industry and probably also groceries, it's yeah, the ha- it doesn't work. If it doesn't work, the answer a lot of people are just um, keeping the item. But for fashion industry, I don't have the the data exactly, I, but I would I would expect okay. it's still worth it. It's still, I think it's quite high. My my cousin's a, a fashion designer. He's got a um, a great brand called James Lakeland, and um, he was saying that the returns are more online. Uh, I might be misquoting him. More online than offline, because I think what happens is people they order a few. Yeah. Like I'm not quite sure what size. Let me let me order three of them. Or I'm not sure what color either. I'll order a couple of sizes of a few different colors. So maybe they make a sale. So you make like the sale. But then like you get a bunch of returns because it's too small, too big or the wrong color. Yeah. Yeah, it would be, uh, this is a good point. I think uh, I need to do some research on that. Interesting. Because no, pretty... what was interesting in lockdown as well is the, the, the delay to get a refund was extended as well because obviously they were, 
they were um, really, really busy. They had to face an increased amount of uh, order and but also return. So then to get a refund, you, know, you could wait a, a month, more over a month. So obviously when you do have that habit to order multiple size or multiple product, knowing that at the end you will just keep one or two, you cannot really do that many, many times during the month because otherwise you will have a lot of money uh, waiting for, you know, a refund money waiting. Oh, that's true. That is very true, actually. That is very true. I think they they moderate themselves at some point. But yeah, it's definitely, I can see my sister is like that. I mean, I I can relate to that story a lot. (laughs) Oh, that's funny. Well, Sandra, thank you so much for joining me. I love love the conversation. And it's going to be super interesting to see how, how all of this lands. But I certainly, I certainly agree, like online and offline, uh, you know, uh, go hand in hand, I think nowadays. So that'd be cool. Well, enjoy, say enjoy your second lockdown, but I hope we're out (laughs) of it soon. Um, And I hope you get back to the office soon. And thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much. Have a great lockdown. Thank you. See (laughs) you.